Hello, I'm Charmaine, and welcome to You Make Your Own Holiday Gift Tags. In this video, I'll be sharing with you some simple but very impressive ways to make lovely personalized gift tags for all your holiday gift giving. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to take these paper crafting ornaments. They're a heavy duty chipboard, like a hard cardboard. And I have these really pretty snowflakes. They came in a package of two for $2.99 at the Hobby Store. I think I got them at Hobby Lobby, but it could have been Michael's, AC Moore, or Joann's because I frequent all of them. And I had, they also had these neat little gift tags. And for $2.99, you get a package of eight of the gift tags. The first step in doing something like this, you need to prepare that, that heavy cardboard or heavy paper so that it can take your paints and glitter and glues. And I'm going to be using some easy to obtain Liquitex Gesso. It goes on like a white paint and it gives you a nice smooth white surface. I usually just pour some on a styrofoam plate or an old piece of plastic or in an egg carton. And I like to use these foam brushes for applying the gesso. The gesso dries pretty quickly, so just apply a light coating of gesso on one side of each of your pieces, and then just put it aside to dry for a few minutes. By the time you get through a stack of these, they'll almost be dry enough to turn over, usually 15, 20 minutes tops. Your gesso is ready to flip over and do the other side. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to give a coating of gesso. I'm not cutting off those little gold strings that make them easy to tie onto your packages. You could, if you're worried about getting those strings dirty with your paints or gesso, you could take them off, but I hate that retying, so I usually just move them around kind of carefully, and I found that that's not usually a problem. Okay, the gesso is now dry, so I've prepared my palette with some metallic paints, and I'm using the Martha Stewart Crafts paints. I like these metallics. They're a little bit translucent, so they're uh, generally I usually will put two layers on for these, but they're kind of they're beautiful and very pretty and pastel-y. Um, this one here is called Jetstream Pearl. It's a very light, light blue. This one here is Sterling Metallic, so it's a silver. And then I have this very pretty um, citrine, it's called Citrine Gold Metallic, so it has the greenish cast to it, which I thought would be really nice for the holiday season. And my last one here is the Rose Chrome Metallic, which is a pinkish sort of color. So I thought this green, this citrine green right here, and this rose gold were a nice play on Christmas colors without being the in-your-face red and green. I also have a cup of water ready to go for cleaning and some paper towels. And for this painting, I'm going to be using an acrylic brush. It's an angled brush. Um, it's one that I got from probably Michael's or Hobby Lobby. What I'm going to do is start with the back side of a tag. I usually do the back sides first. Um, and I'm gonna do this one in, no, I haven't done the blue. I did the blue, the red, the green. I haven't done silver yet. So I'm going to do this in silver. And I'm going to paint a layer of the silver metallic. Sterling metallic is actually what it's called. And then I'll set that aside to dry. I will probably put a second coat on it because these paints, it's a little hard to see here because it's a sunny sunny morning where I'm living, but it's definitely a little bit streaky. So these will get a second coat before I flip them over and put two coats on the other side. I did a few in the green so you can see the difference. This one here is one single coat of the citrine gold and this is a second coat. So a second coat is going to give you a nicer color and that one's ready to move on. I'm going to be demonstrating a very simple way to create really nice designs for your gift tags just using some stamps. I have this Holly stamp um, that I've had for a while. This is 
stamp abilities, probably sold Michael's, Joann's, those sort of places. And I have three different snowflakes, three different sizes that I use in different combinations when I'm stamping. And I have a neat little quote, always leave a little room, always leave a little room in your holidays for miracles, a nice quote. And I have another quote stamp somewhere in my collection here, just a simple believe. And those are kind of fun. So it's just simply a sta I stamped snowflakes. I used my stickles. In this case, I used the stickle color called icicle and did little stickle dots. They're still drying right now. And on the back, I have stamped, before I did my stickle dots, I stamped believe. And when these stickle dots are dry, I'm going to dot my eye and maybe add a little bit more glitter. And my to and from could easily be written down there. So I have one here that's just been stamped. Now when you choose are going to do stamping, because you're going to be putting wet glue on this and in some techniques you'll be painting, you want to make sure that you're using the right kind of stamp pad. This is an acid-free permanent ink waterproof stamp pad. Whenever you're going to be doing anything where you're going to add wet glitter, wet glue, paints, uh, any of those kinds of things, you want to make sure that you're using uh, permanent waterproof stamp pads. These are very large. They're Ranger. Um, I am going to be using some different colors here. This is manganese blue. I have sepia, which is a really nice brown. And I have some jet black. So these are excellent and well worth the added price, and these stores often have good deals going. So for this one, I used the blue, and I stamped my little snowflakes, and I'm going to use icicle stickles. There's lots of colors of stickles available. Sometimes when you first open the stickles after you've used, you haven't you've used it, but maybe not recently, you might want to use a little pin and just kind of open it up because they do tend to clog up. And you're just going to simply gently squeeze. Sometimes I'll squeeze a little to the side just to get it going. And you're just gently going to squeeze little dots of the glitter glue wherever you want to have a little glue. And again, if you get too much, just grab a toothpick or a Q-tip and get it off right away before it has time to start to dry. So I'm just going to go through. Some of them are a little more glittered than I'd like, but that's okay. And get your glitter wherever you want your glitter. And that is a very simple way to make a very attractive stamp, stamped gift tag. If you want to be a little more elaborate with your tags, I was talking about painting, like this one here. Uh, this one I did the stamp at the top and turned it the other way. You're just going to be basically, it's like coloring, only with paint. And I have my paint palette here. For this one, I have a little bit of white. Um, that's the uh, acrylic basics, the Liquitex basics from Michaels. I'm going to be using a red from Winsor Newton called Permanent Rose, but any red will work. I like this one because I'm using these slightly antique looking colors, and this has a little bit of pink in it. And then I have two greens. I have chromium oxide green, which is this lighter green that you see here. And I have sap green, which is this very dark green. And to do this, you're going to want to have a really small paintbrush because you're going to be working really small. Take a little bit of white on the tip of your brush and pick up a little bit of the dark green and let's go back and forth, white, dark green, and then just paint along. And it's basically like doing the coloring book. I'm going to use a little bit of dark. Here I have a little white on my brush underneath so that my colors aren't too dark, and it gives them a little bit of variation in the colors. Blend it in. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the lighter green. and maybe put a little bit of white in there to lighten it. And just fill in that space with some greens. 
A lot of times the stamps, depending on the stamp that you're using, might give you a nice color guide to show you the, the shades and the way things are mixed, but that doesn't mean you have to do that. You can do it any way you like. I'm going to add a little more dark up here at the top. If your brush gets too full of paints, be sure to wipe it off. I don't like to get my brush wet while I'm in the middle of something, so I just keep a paper towel handy to squeeze off the excess paint. After I've done a couple of these, it will need to be, my brush will need to be washed, but I'll use it for a little while first. Add little white highlights in here. And these are acrylic paints, so they will dry quickly. You can't get away with watercolor paints um, or tempera paints on, a, on something like this. You do need something more permanent. And so you do need to have some acrylics. If you don't have tube acrylics like I'm using and you do have craft acrylics on hand, like the ones we painted the tags with, that will work just fine. But it, the key is acrylic because you're painting on an acrylic surface. And I might add a little bit of white highlight. Just a little bit, it's not too much. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna wipe off my brush really good because I'm not going to I'm not going to do anything but wipe it off. And I'm going to move over to my red and paint my little red berries. So, give it a nice coating of paint, and again, I'm going to wipe it off, and I'm going to take just the tiniest little bit of paint on my brush, and give each berry a little white highlight. So, there you have it. And the last thing you can do, you can leave it as it is. I stamped this with black ink, and I didn't completely cover the outlines of the black ink. So it already has an outlined appearance. I could leave it. When I did the other one, I had used the sepia, this browner tone ink, and pretty much lost that outline. So I used a little bit of Payne's Gray. I did not use a pure black. I used this color called Payne's Gray uh, to do a little bit of outlining, but you could equally well just use a black Sharpie, just go very delicately, or if you happen to have a dark green Sharpie, you can pretty much use any color you want to outline. So this one I might only do a little bit of line work with my Payne's Gray. I might add a little line work on my leaves to bring out that center line. But otherwise, probably leave these little guys alone. And there you have it. Hand-painted gift tags, which can be very impressive. Here's a list of the materials that I used in making this video but it isn't necessary for you to use exactly those brands or exactly those colors. If you already have some craft paints available at home or are just going to the craft stores, see what's available, see what you like, and put it together and make the tags truly your own. Thanks for watching this video. It's one of the first few that I've put up on my new YouTube channel, so if you like what you see, subscribe today and get updates because I have a lot of new videos planned for 2019 and I'll be looking forward to seeing you. Meanwhile, happy holidays and happy crafting.